We back. Kind of. Halfway. Halfway, man. Y'all, if y'all ain't been to the city, man, y'all know what that green thing do, man. Pollen everywhere, dog. That shit is deadly. Man, everybody <laughs> not built like me, you know what I'm saying? Y'all give it a hell of this type of shit, you know what I'm saying? Aren't you from here? You would have made it medieval times. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't have meds back then. Real I ain't made it. Nah, I didn't need it. Real man can survive. Yeah, I would have been able to survive in the medieval times. They ain't use condoms and shit. You'd have been dead by 20. <laughs> Alright man, welcome back, welcome back. It's episode 46. Episode 46. Let me yeah. make sure let me double check on um, double no, check. 47. 47, my bad, my bad. That was early prediction. Oh man. How you doing, bro? Good man. Good man. The weather finally warmed up. George is back in full effect. Everybody outside. It's hot as shit outside. It's warm. It's definitely warm. It's gonna get worse. Oh that's oh this wondering. I mean, what's the next? Day. Summer? summer. Oh, that shit gonna be, uh, uh, I'm going outside with no shirt on all summer. It's gonna be bad. Yeah, it is. For sure. And it's been bad for the last few years, but I can tell it's gonna be bad, bad. It's gonna be, people gonna be outside, though. Oh, gosh, people gonna be outside. Now, would you rather be here? Would you rather be LA? Would you rather be New York? Or would you rather be Miami? Ooh, uh, shit. Because so I'll tell you what, what the feds were. <laughs> it was in all three. They was in all three. They wasn't here. It was in all three. Looking for something. Looking for somebody. They, if you party, they might be looking for you too. Listen, man. If you like to party. Don't take the pink candy. Hey, man, you know, they bring the same, take that take that to a whole nother level. Let's get into it, man. That's oh, your man's. Oh, my Staple, yo, in your hey, okay, Staple in your city. Hey, okay. Staple in your city. Yeah, you know what I'm going to say? Staple, a legend up top. A legend of music game. Yeah, he's a legend of the music game. We ain't got to talk about nothing 30, else. Damn near 40 years, though. Yeah. Gave us what y'all call y'all greatest rapper ever. Big. Mm -hmm. Gave us that. Blessed us. Mm -hmm. 112. Mace. Mary J. Mm. I mean, keep going with that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Craig Mack. Black Rob. They didn't have longevity. But they Loom. Loom. G-Dub. G-Dub. <laughs> Special <laughs> delivery. <laughs> He gave us a lot of classics. I mean, you know, he, he kind of, in a little bit, he helped Usher, too. He helped Usher? Usher's going to be Usher, though. He had J.D. J.D., yeah, he did. I'm talking about saying. early on his career. Yeah, I mean, listen, man. Yeah. The catalog is severe. It is. We, it is. We, it is. I can never discredit it. Right, Carrie. Who would be harder to cancel? Who would be harder to mute forever? R. Kelly or P. Diddy's catalog? Oh, ooh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm talking about... Tell the truth. We really want to get crazy. We got to throw MJ in there because you know that accusation was crazy. Those is crazy, too, but... um. Yeah, really want to get crazy. You, know, he, you gotta he, throw Jay in it. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's no accusation on Jay. That's crazy. The word is there, but we're going to get We ain't cussing Jay. So, that, <laughs> and, we, and he ain't been nothing yet. Nah, so. Oh, 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 Everything that R. Kelly has done, including Correct. The writing. So, because it's the same, it's going to be more of a conversation with that with Diddy too, because he's not the yeah, because the vocalist not, behind yeah. everything. So, I agree. yeah. So um, the writing, you know what I mean the the Aaliyahs, the yeah, the, all that. Let's let's, let's tell the truth. Saying, like everything he touched. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Correct. Correct. He write all of these songs and stuff. No, I'm saying he, he wrote, wrote a lot. Yeah, yeah. He, wrote, he wrote Michael Jackson too. Definitely wrote Michael Jackson. Definitely. Do we want to? I mean, we could do the Googles to see what everything was a part of. If you want to make, I mean, if you want to make a decision that that way. I mean, just going off the which, top, which, which I think it'd be a little tougher to new maybe R. Kelly. New Diddy, I think so. From people he didn't put on, he did more of like producer type things. Very true, but I mean, R. Kelly also wrote for Michael Jackson. He didn't write his own thing, discography. How many songs he write? One? That is correct. Yeah. That is correct. He did not write his own discography. Right. But we got, I mean, we got Aaliyah. Her age ain't number but a number. Mm -hmm. Oh, we, oh we my gosh. Kelly, Kelly filthy. Our Kelly had Aaliyah singing that is filthy, though. Yeah, we he, got, back in the 90s. he got At Your Best by Aaliyah, too, though. Ooh. 
Yeah, at your mm. best could have been. Yeah, he got age. back and forth by Aaliyah too, though. Yo, he's, he's a freak. Just like he's saying. He broke the whole thing. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just answering your question. Yeah, I'm just that's, answer- that's part of his category. I mean, his category. All I'm doing is just answering the question about what y'all asked. He got B2K, bump, bump, bump. Yo, he's a freak. You got Charlie <laughs> Wilson, Charlie last name Wilson. Okay, that's a hit. He got our, uh, the uh, Isley Brothers, Contagious. Oh, we know that. Michael Jackson, you know what I'm saying? Cry. I don't know that song, I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, I don't know you got the yeah, you are not alone. Oh shit. <coughs> he might. He might. I'm just saying. But your but your show is come on man. <laughs> hey yo, excuse me guys. This this green shit outside is out here to the death of me. You know he got big too, and he got Jay Z. But come on, but your answer is who? Who your answer? I said R. Kelly. You said it's harder to cancel R. Kelly? Uh not harder to mute him? Here. It's easier to mute R. Kelly than it would be Diddy. But I would have to go through Diddy's too, because I don't really listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Come on now. Yo, I don't listen to a bunch of New York places, um, rappers, so. But nah, Diddy, I still listen to 112. Easier. But that's what I'm saying, like those back in the day 90s people, I'm like, yeah. but the rappers, I don't know. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Diddy had the locks too? Uh, nah. nah. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he, he, did, he, he did. definitely got the locks, yeah, for sure. Oh, nah, definitely not, got the Nah, go ahead and cancel. Uh, go ahead and cancel. Uh, what's your boy name? Kels. Kels. Yeah. Uh, Piper. I mean, yeah. At the end of the day, man, Diddy <laughs> got Diddy. Diddy got the combination of great rap but and R&B. great R and B. So mm-hmm. that's gonna be hard to. I mean, that's why the whole JD thing was a little. Uh, anyway, man, they trying to take the boy I mean, out. Hold on, hold on. Man. With that being said, would JD and Diddy? Who you? I'm rocking with the South, man. Okay. All right. Come on. You man. just be biased. I don't think that's the most appropriate matchup. That's all I'm saying. I'm For who? For Diddy. Mm-hmm. JD, JD actually make beats. Okay. JD's an actually hands-on producer. Yeah, he is. He is. You know what I'm saying? You might got to put P. Diddy with one of them. Uh, Cat DJ Khaled or something like that. Uh, that whoa, whoa, don't who just else? Say, don't just who else fronting? Like who else fronting on the, on the ones and twos? That That is part of being a producer, too. I'm, I'm not saying I'm it's saying. not. I'm saying you got. I mean, because DJ Gallup produced it too. He put them projects together. He put them got. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you got to put but them more somebody. Yeah, you know, just, you, you got to put. I mean, you can do Fifty Cent. Fifty Cent did a lot of that. Just put no, 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 sounds don't, together. Don't, 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 don't disrespect Diddy Catalog like that. Though. I'm That's asking crazy. you, DJ Khaled. DJ Khaled got hits. Don't do that. Yeah, but he ain't got Diddy hits. He got R and B and he ain't got Diddy hits. Come on now, he gave us an all time class not too long ago. I don't know when that was the last time Diddy did that. Which one? Shout out to Rihanna. You know, Bryson Tiller. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, 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 okay, okay then. Okay. Last time, did he make something that great? Exactly. Let's keep it moving. Oh, okay. I mean, last night, Kishko? That was 06. <laughs> <laughs> did he really get make music like that? Diddy just dropped it out. He did. Let's keep it moving. You see how they, they, they shut that shit down. And he dropped uh, Danny Kane all of them. But anyway. Day 26. Day 26, the band. Making them. Dialogue, <laughs> so, dialogue. A lot of bullshit, a lot of bullshit <laughs> on his jacket. A lot of bullshit. He did alcohol when he did with that. Oh, I ain't trying to sue you. I mean, if we're going to include but that he, into it. I mean, he made it popular. Yeah. The drink, those. Syrah. Syrah. I mean, hey, if we're going to do, if we gonna do the, the, uh, the bottle battle, we got to do a lot of folks. Because Big Diddy has some I'm, shit. I'm, divide I'm, him in water pop. Yeah. Jay-Z. You know, Jay-Z. That's what I'm saying. Not we just talking about music, though. music, though. We just talking about music. I will say he fucked himself doing that. Suing. Oh, the, uh, uh, Diago. Yeah. The what? No, not revolt. Well, he sold. No, 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 him yeah. suing the uh, alcohol the company alcohol that was distributor. Yeah, through the Ciroc. That started, you know, that started throwing him in a bad situation. After that, um, I think uh, they are trying to get him out of here, though, man. Well, I think that he messed up crazy. the accusations he threw in the lawsuit because he started he started trying to discredit them as yeah, a company. Yeah, yeah. So racism and stealing all that type of shit because you can sue him. Jay Z just had success. He did. He so, did. Uh, who that was? Uh, Do say whatever. Yeah, it was. I, I wouldn't. Yeah. LME, yeah, so mm-hmm. um, he probably tried to follow suit. He thought he could do the Jay Z thing, yeah. but he, he, you know, <sighs> Dang, your reputation, man. You can't be moving like that. <laughs> you can't move like Jay Z been married for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jay-Z, yeah. You know, he yeah. and he got Beyonce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You can't be moving like that and throwing that. Yeah, did he did, did, did he call the names? Uh, come did on, been filthy. did he been filthy? That's I mean, all I'm I mean, saying. Young Miami is what 20, 30, maybe like 28, 29, nine, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you so you over here. You're not even gonna mention the Lori Harveys of the world, the yeah. Cassies, the, the the whatever yeah. whatever girl your your son was messing with that you 
that's that's crazy too. Y'all out here just exchanging them. I mean, so uh, what was that Friday at the next? And he was like, "You bring the girls in here, make sure." No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah. Diddy, so, Diddy, Diddy's jacket looking real disgusting right now. So, what's your thoughts on the man? At that being a New York staple, I'm sure you probably know a little bit more about his name, his reputation, what he means yeah, to, mean, to you as a New but, Yorker. What is that? But how I mean, do you, his, how do you let me react? say this, right? They've, you know, Diddy has had accusations before. Correct. In the past, way Correct. long. So, I mean, it's been, like you said, about 30 years now. And it's been happening. Um, it's just getting a little more prevalent now because everybody's coming out with the, I mean, I ain't going to say Me Too movement, but to an extent. Yeah. You know, especially after New York did that law where you have two years to kind of report that case and you got to get them shits out of here. So, I mean, um, you know, his, his music is going to live on. You know, mm. Nick's music is going to live on at some point um, until he, unless something comes about where it's like, to me, it's like certain things, how I look at it right now. It's like, whatever he gets charged with, then you start looking from there. The sex yeah. trafficking, to me, it's kind of crazy. But, kind of. The reason why, the reason why I say it's kind of crazy is simply like this. Because it's one thing to like sex traffic kids, but if like, another thing as an adult, if you're like, Let's say you're kidnapping somebody and now you're putting them into a sex trafficking ring and doing that. Opposed to women want to come over here and party with you. And then now you start kind of pimping them out. You kind of, no offense, but you kind of volunteer for that. Not volunteer to be pimped out, but you kind of say, you kind of, yeah, that sounds a little crazy. But I'm saying like you, you voluntarily went over and wanted to party with them. Okay, so what now, if so now, what, now, hold on, but what's all what if that's all they were trying to do? That's what I'm saying, what's wrong with that? Yeah, yeah no, 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 I'm saying no, 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 what I'm saying I'm is I'm saying because that's not what he, he, you I feel like you're making up one scenario yeah, that no, really not I'm, aligned with the allegations. Saying, are you talking about drug induced? Yeah. Now that's crazy. I'm, I'm but but, but, take but his, of, well, hold on. it is, but here's the thing. Everybody in the most people, if you heard about any type of ditty party, you heard that it's nothing but drugs. That's why they, they do take the phones and they say that it's drugs there. So to me, you're signing up to be involved with that. Now, are you being signed up to be fucked by everybody? No, that's crazy. So if that's the, if I'm taking what you said at face value, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like you said, you this is one of y'all New York grapes. Yeah, and I, I know I don't, this is. I don't prove anything that he's been doing. What I'm saying is that's the stain. Like if if some some came out and happened to one of our greats, you know what I'm saying? People tied to where they, they hometown. Yeah, it's a culture and everything. And this is undoubtedly one of the top five most important people from that culture. Yes, in New York history and, and hip hop history. It's still relevant. You know what I'm saying? It's still active to this day. Yeah, I mean dancing this year, unfortunately. If what I'm taking what you say at face value, you say people knowing what they get themselves into. Why is it a surprise and why would it be any pushback that he is accepted as a sexual deviant, a criminal, somebody that takes advantage of people? Because as you say, they signed enough for what he also signed enough for liability to be when somebody. Yeah, comes yeah, in, yeah I'm not, no, I'm not, no, I'm not saying that. He, I'm not saying that it's a surprise. We've been hearing I'm this shit about this forever. Now, I'm just talking about where, where how it becomes like a stain on you is if once you're because I mean, no matter what. It's a stain on him simply for the accusation being there and multiple accusations happening. Now, if you charge with something, that to me that changes the whole playing field. If you just get a bunch of accusations out there and then you and nothing happens, it's cool. That's cool. And no, it's not. It's not. No, 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 I'm not saying that. What are you saying? Choose your words. I'm not saying that. I know that's your man, New York. I'm just saying. I feel like you're giving a lot of leeway to what Diddy is. No, I'm not. They accuse this man of Jeffrey Epstein level. That is it's sick. Crimes. It's sick. First of all, I, listen. I Three agree. different this cities. This man is out here is sick. Federal <laughs> raids. Children in handcuffs. Oh, security raids. Ooh, this, in this the middle crazy. of the afternoon on a Monday. That was a Monday. Yeah, that's nasty. That's all I'm saying. That's not how you want to start your week. And not what that, because we can compile this with the long list of bad boy artists that have been saying these things about him. For thirty years, you see, you see, everybody ch- turn to church every That's, time they uh, it's been they turn to religions as of, soon as they leave them. It's been accusation of P Diddy and Tupac killed, Biggie killed, Kim Porter killed. Is is he leaving folks for dead? Still in publishing? He taking advantage of folks? They they they've been calling him gay. Well, hey, 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 you. And I'm not saying about. that's a crime. <laughs> That's why you can't say that. I'm just saying. No, no, no I'm just saying you can't say that. In the sense of like, you know what I'm saying? What's boy name off uh, Friday at the next? Uh, who, Cat uh, Williams? 
No, the big one. Yeah. Damon. Oh, oh Terry Crews. Yeah, Terry Crews, Damon. In that sense, aggressive. <laughs> Caught my man's in the bathroom out in his business. That's what they accused him of. Hey, yo, that's what we talk, do. We talking about Ush when he was 13 years old. We talking about Justin Bieber when he was 12, 13 years old. We talking about kids that were signed to, these, to, this, to this guy. Yo, he's, and a, around he's a horny freak. What they got to do with being 13-year-old kids around? He's a horny... 13-year-olds? Yo, he's a horny... Might be a pedophile freak. That has a lot. I guess a lot to do. Yeah, he horny as hell. Being horny and dealing with 13 year olds is two separate different things. He said he wanted the fresh ass. <laughs> this I'm going to play this audio clip. Chris Hansen. So now we have two people come out saying that Diddy was talking to the feds. Do you think that's true? Whether it's true or not, and he might have been cooperative in some way, shape, or form, you don't get away with human trafficking unless you give up John Gotti or something like that, and that's not what happened here. I can tell you, Jesse, this, that this investigation has been going on for a long time, very closely held by HSI, so much so that even some of the agents on the raid a week ago today didn't know whose house they were raiding until they got there. That's how closely held this is. Wow, because there could have been a tip. Absolutely. And there are... Now, now, hold on. That, that's where the biggest thing on your jacket come from. If you out here snitching... <laughs> <laughs> you can't be out here snitching. Damn bro. the kids. The yeah, snitch, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, 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 no. The kids too, but I'm talking about on that side. Come Listen, on, you can't be out here talking to the feds and cooperating. They said they've been watching this man and observing and investigating him for sex trafficking for a very long time. If you know anything about Homeland Security and raids, that's a lot of money they put into it. So you have to have some type of knowledge or have some type of actual uh, proof of something before you go in the raid. That's you know, Diddy got cameras everywhere in his house. He does. <laughs> everywhere in all his homes. He does. Uh, so, he you know, tell him what you want to see from takes. Hey, man, all I'm saying is that the trafficking are not okay with it unless it's just drugs. Have fun with that. That would be okay if he was trafficking drugs for the people that was, was providing drugs at the, se uh, the, the, the sex trafficking parties, right? That's what I'm asking. Because that's one of the same, right? No. They go together, right? Together, right? No, you no, watch no, the wire. You know no, how they're no, coming no, in no, on the dock. No, you know what I'm saying? On the boats and the coast and all that. They with, the drugs and, with the drugs. Yeah. Listen, I'm not, listen, I can't help what you do with the drugs. All I'm doing is to provide them to How would they do anything with the drugs if nobody's providing the drugs? You watch Snowfall. What I'm saying. What is Uncle them told him? I'm cool with. What is Auntie I'm them cool told him? Selling drugs. What is Uncle told him? I don't remember. I sell weed, nephew. Mm -hmm. That yeah. white shit come with something different. It definitely does. He but, outside. He in the streets, gang wars and shit. He didn't want to kill a boy. He want to. He had. He had to shoot him in the shootout. Damn, they passed out when he killed. Listen, he found out he killed. Then he playing with a hundred, a few hundred mil. But he want to. He, he want to move big shit. Pause. Bottom line is, man, Diddy didn't but, move alone in this. You know what I'm saying? He represents a larger enterprise here. Some might refer to as Illuminati, i.e. Cat Williams, mm. i.e. what believe? people have been talking about for years. Do you believe it? I 100 percent believe there's a lot of validity in what people like Diddy he was probably at the have been allowed and condoning. I definitely think. There was a Epsteinish shit going on with R. Kelly, P. Diddy. <laughs> I, dare I say the whole Rockefeller? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why you always? Why you always throwing people in there that ain't been? Ain't nothing happened. You know with why? Them. Because Aaliyah was 14, 15 years old around grown men, but everybody's saying she was the most beautiful person in the world. Y'all popping bottles and shit. She like seventeen. What the fuck you? I don't care what she looked like. How old was Foxy? How old was Kim? Oh, I don't know how old Kim was. Alright. I'm just asking. Hey, man. I listen. Music industry. Let me not put it specifically on Rockefeller. Because, yeah, I'm, say, I'm throwing, saying throwing, is, throwing a lot of stain on I mean, Russell Simmons. I mean, I, could, I, I tried it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's Simmons. all tied together. Bad boy. Yeah, all right. I'm just saying. Def, Def Jam. How was Rockefeller excluded? Keep don't y'all party together? Don't y'all hang out together? None of them came out and dissed Russell Simmons about that sex, that rape shit. None of them came out and spoke against it. None of them. Now nah, Usher went and chill with them. Say, say something about your man. That's what I'm, that's what I just said. <laughs> say something about your man. That's what I just said. Say something about your boy. You just at home, but you said he came up on the day. That's what you told me. 
What that mean? That mean that's that bad. Represent the South. Man, you ain't never heard nothing about so so deaf. That's for damn. We, we heard about Usher. We we ain't never heard about so so deaf. What they was doing with Bow Wow? Bow Wow was good. Go ahead. No, no, we were. I was gonna change out to say they said something about um, Oprah. Oh, for sure. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, but oh, yeah. yeah. Oprah got a hand in a lot of things. Some Oprah. Of Oh, but you, you want to talk about Oprah? You want to talk about Oprah? Right? Yeah. That's, 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 that's different. That's different. Oprah was there with Jeffrey Epstein. Oprah, oh, yeah. Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. Harvey Weinstein. Piggy. 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 And you got secrecy behind you, you can expect some fishy going on. That's all I'm gonna say. I think y'all think um, Oprah, the the queen pin, she the one running the show and throwing these little suckers under the bus. I mean, so started hitting the front. It was him. This ain't the. I mean, the, the first time uh, Oprah been accused of you know what I'm saying yeah. foul doings. You know what I'm saying so. She got, the, but she got the money to kind of hold stuff down. And the politics. People yeah. Who, very true. So I mean, and you know, I'm about to say politics. Politicians being that shit too. They play the party. So you want the party? So you know what I think will happen, right? Is the fact that I don't know how much R. Kelly was included, just because R. Kelly, I think he was just he didn't have the money to really play around, and I think that's maybe. And if he did have something to do, that's probably why he went down. For like Diddy, it's been years. Like they've been talking about this with Diddy from '90 whatever, yeah, and it's now 2024. We 30. So I mean, it took thirty years to get R. Kelly too, though. He did throw him under the bus too. Yeah, it's, it's definitely been thirty years. Yeah, to get R. Kelly, he was in the nineties too. But R. Kelly, but R. Kelly done hit R. Kelly done been in trial how many times? That's true. I mean, did he been in, uh, in trial a bunch of times? Yeah, but not for, not for I'm this. I'm just saying he's been tied to criminal activity and, and been put. Yeah, but I'm talking about like years. yeah, I agree with that. But yeah. I'm talking about the to the extent of what this is. Yeah, because nobody want to believe that about Usher, man. People love Usher. <laughs> And that's the you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nobody want to believe that about their favorite. That's why. That's why I was asking you. This is probably one of the most important figures we've ever seen. Yeah. This ain't R. Kelly with the good music and the good hits. This is somebody that's tied to the music industry, mm-hmm. TV industry, mm-hmm. the party industry, alcohol, everything branding. Yeah. This is a very popular. He he's like he's like, he's like black he excellence. Was sex trafficking, or he was a part of it. Usher is a part of Sixth Chapter, or are you saying like he was like Diddy was using him? Like, you're saying he was, they, but they've been accusing him of being a victim since okay. forever, yeah, so yeah, like from Diddy yeah. to LA Reed to all of them. So, yeah, but, you say your boy Fab was my became a victim too. You seen the clip, right? You saw how uncomfortable Fab was. Fab he said, didn't do that. He didn't get up because one Jada kiss right there, too. Yeah, and both of them said, said like, nothing, don't say nothing to me. <laughs> <laughs> Just playing that shit. And has been dissing Diddy for a long time. They have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have. Okay. Okay. They have. Saying. They, they been saying. dissing Diddy. You're saying your mans. Hey, this gonna expose a lot. Let the domino effect fall. Right. This better not go quiet. All right, hold on, Mike. All right, so do you think if Diddy is charged with anything, he's he's telling the world everything, or you think he's just gonna kind of like try to pay his way out? Or I don't think Diddy will be allowed to tell everything. Yeah, I think they were they, <laughs> Jeffrey they, Epstein and off him and. and they will kill that man probably yeah. before he get anything out. Yeah, I don't okay. think he even get that far. No. Okay, I feel you. Yeah, let's stay on music. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let you take this one over because um, one of your favorites, Beyonce, dropped her anticipated Act Two, Cowboy Carter. Act Two. Mm-hmm. And um, she said Act it wasn't 29. it wasn't a country album. It was a Beyonce album. Correct. I uh, got I got through maybe two songs. Okay. Yeah, and that's you got through two songs on mm-hmm. twenty twenty seven song songs album. Yeah. yeah, okay. It wasn't uh, I wasn't feeling, you know. Maybe I need to give it back another listen, but it just wasn't for me. I mean, what uh, what she's uh, projected to do? I want to say three hundred fifty thousand first week. Yeah, I believe so. Let me let me double check those and, numbers for Cowboy Carter. Shout out to Beyonce. And, and Tyler Beyonce Johnson, knows. Tyler's projected to do twenty thousand. Twenty five or something like that. <laughs> My boy Sir just sold ten thousand. So. Okay, shout out to Sir. His album's actually good. Yeah, um, it's alright. 
But yeah, Beyonce's new album, <laughs> Cowboy <laughs> Carter, is expected to move 350,000 copies in its first week. Okay. Um, and I want to say that is more than the Renaissance album. I want to say that was the Renaissance, but I outsold it. That's interesting. Do you think you this? Think so? yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, Renaissance sold 332,000 first week. I say it's interesting simply because I felt like Renaissance was more anticipated than that's fair than um cowboy carter than well act two so i would say like i would assume that you know that being beyonce's like album that I've, whenever her last album was you know years in the making you would Correct. think that first one would have did way more numbers i expected that first one to do like 400 500 to be fair this has damn it twice the songs as renaissance as well too it does okay um, so then that makes sense but it's still i would still think to that first one would at least did three fifty to four. And you talking about features from Post Malone, Miley Cyrus? It, it's a different genre of reach too. So, so now it's so now you look at that part. Now it's she's reaching a different demographic. Uh, Demographics I, play. I think uh, yeah, I think her. The yeah, I think her reach is gonna be her reach. I just think when you, when she puts certain names on it, and Beyonce, that that brings a certain level of attention where people. I rushing to hear. It. Well, well, I say her, they, she's bringing their demographic with them, because you know you got to think about you bringing the Miley Cyrus fans, you bringing the Post Malone fans, and whoever else you're putting on there. To, to me, that's my thought. Because I mean, you got to understand that Post Malone still was doing at one point with doing the mill. Miley Cyrus has been Miley Cyrus has been Miley Cyrus for however long. So I neither think, one of them have been Beyonce. I'm just I'm just leave that at that. No, I won't I say that. But I know Post Malone has been huge. So I'm saying you're bringing their fans with. He ain't you. never been Beyonce. He's never been Beyonce. How many people you don't count to say that that's been Beyonce? That's my point. So what but you I'm mean? I'm saying, but you're still bringing you're still bringing more people outside of that. You you got to think about how many Miley Cyrus fans have never listened to Beyonce. Same with Post Malone fans. I, I don't know about oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> I can I uh, can I can reverse that and say Beyonce fans probably never heard of Molly Cyrus album, but I don't know about Molly Cyrus fans. Yeah. Never listened to Beyonce. I don't know what you're talking about. There. I well, think you you off there. No, I don't think so. But you're talking about the most prolific artists in what modern history. You know what I'm saying? Who's been a bigger artist for the last 20 years consistently than Beyonce? I won't say 20, but that's like I said 20 though. Five, ten, it's been like Taylor Swift. Almost. I said 20. Let's move on to that. I'm just saying. We're going to do this. Uh, Cowboy Carter, um, 27 songs, hour and 19 minutes long. That's a lot of fucking music. It is not a country album. It is a Beyonce album. And she plays with that concept throughout the entire project. Um, there is even a quote in here on the song Linda Martell, or the, uh, the interlude, I should say, where she says, Genres are a funny little concept, aren't they? Before mm -hmm. she begins to rap on spaghetti. Okay. And, oh yeah. So, um, let me read this real quick. So, yeah, I, I, so the first half of this album, American Requiem, five in a very long song. Um, Literally. This. It reminds me of uh, like something. It does, like it. <laughs> which is that's actually I, I just, a great yeah, that's a that's, great comparison yeah, because at that time they were mixing rock and opera. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Queen, arguably the greatest rock band ever, if not the greatest rock band, like Queen, excluding yeah. the Beatles, whatever you want to call it. Queen is fire. Um, yeah. So the first half of this album, American Requiem, Blackbird, Sixteen Carriage Protector, uh, Texas Hold'em, Bodyguard, Jolene. This is where you really hear the country inspiration that she was pushing well before the album came out. The billboard, the the line dancing that everybody was doing on TikTok, the cowboys, the, the, the horses, the boots, um, the, the lasso, I don't even what's this shit called? They weren't on their neck. Little yeah, little yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever the shit called. Um, that's where you really hear the uh the country influence and um the, the guitar, the banjo, whatever it's simple instrument, but she does add her Beyonce flair to it um, as far as the, the production. Okay. So it's not... She, she is correct. It is not country in its truest form. Country is a very simple genre. It's usually lyric-heavy, 
it's not the greatest vocalist in the world and it's not really focused on vocalism it's more of emotional it's like a blues almost type of thing and they just play the guitar they sing then you got the more upbeat things where you can get the I mean get the hold downs and all that. I mean, what country artists might, what country fans might come after you for that? I'm just it's telling you simple. in this traditional sense. If you listen to any of the country hits, that's basically what you're hearing. Gotcha. Even in the light in the most recent years, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Shout out my boy uh, Chris Stapleton with the Tennessee Whisper. That's me. That <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, what's my boy name? Uh, Kane Brown. Shout out. Mm-hmm. Kane. Anyways, uh, <laughs> you know, two hours in the <laughs> so, <laughs> so right around when you get to um, track 16, Beyonce and Miley Cyrus, this is a simpler song in its essence, so that's very country esque. And then you get the Levi Jeans of Post Malone. That's when the album changes from it's really a Beyonce album. Now she starts to get into rapping. She starts to get into a little Richard esque oh. kind of throwbacky. Uh, I don't even know what to call it. It's like a, a doo wop ish, upbeat uh, tambourines, a um, lot of ad lib sounds, woos, all that type of shit. See, I didn't get that far in the album because yeah. in the beginning I was just kind of like, all right, this ain't really. Uh. You got a full out fledged rap song with spaghetti. I heard that. How do you like that? I don't know. No. I was gonna ask you about how you like that. I mean, it wasn't for me. Um, it wasn't for me. And then you have some ballads, almost, and you have like some more dance music. Um, Two hands to heaven is a beautiful song. Amen. Yes, yeah, it's, it's. Then she really gets like, as she said, genres are a, a funny concept. She really gets to play and bend the genres and stretch and blend multiple uh, genres together that you okay. can hear inspiration from. Okay. A lot of different areas, and she pays homage to a lot of people throughout. Definitely. So what is your what is your take on the album? Um, I think my take is uh I think Beyonce definitely has proven herself to be um the closest thing to uh the talent of Michael Jackson that we've ever seen. Uh again, I said that last album as well. Okay. To where her vocal ability can fit into anything any beat wise. I think she's definitely in the conversation for greatest singers ever. Okay. And that includes pure vocal ability, and that includes ability to change your rhythm, fit on different beats, not just do ballads. You, you can't. You can do more than just what Adele does. You do more than just what Jennifer Hudson do. You can get hip hoppy like Aaliyah does, but Aaliyah can't do what Brandy does. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. It's gonna be her. It's gonna be Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey. That that uh-huh. type of level of thing. I think Beyonce is in that conversation. Luther Vandross. You know what I mean? We can get to all that. Um, okay. As far as the way she chose it chose to approach the production on the album because the production is 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 flawless. You know what I'm saying she's gonna have the best team for everything. All the time she always has. You know what I'm saying she has the best writer. She has the best everything. Yeah. Um, Beyonce style of singing for me doesn't build a perfect marriage on country production uh, because it's so because it's how far it is to R and B sounding. I would say that, but then a lot of people say Beyonce is doesn't really make R&B music. It's more of a pop sound. Pop sound it's okay. like uh, she does a lot of stacking, like she does her own harmony. So country is, from what I heard, like I said, this is my experience. I'm yeah. not a super well versed in country. Definitely. Country is generally a very simple sound. I agree. It's a very it's simple much, sound to stretch. There's not much stacking at all in country. So really. even when you hear her remake Jolene. And you comparing that to the original song. No, I prefer okay. Jolene, the original. Okay. Because it the, the the emotion is there. You can it's it's like you're talking to some country music sound like you're really talking to something, talking about somebody, and it's not meant to be overly produced. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's what I take from country music. That's what I like from it. You just hear their voice. And even when you see their performances, they're it's typically not a whole lot of production nah, it's, on stage. It's, it's, yo, it's, it's them and their them, guitar, you know what I'm saying? You're them in the microphone and that's it. You just right. got a stool that they sit on. Right, yeah. So when I heard her do her um, take on country, it doesn't... I see what the pushback is where it doesn't necessarily sound like what people would expect to hear when you hear the genre of country. And okay. I think that's where it starts to get a little tough on the ears. I can see for certain people. I didn't like it. I did not like that first half when she's trying to do the country thing and trying to make it Beyonce sounding. But not for me. Okay. Might have to take a 
a small break. All right. <laughs> Quick intermission. <laughs> My bad, my bad. Yeah, back to what we were saying. Um, yeah, uh, so, I didn't love it, man. I didn't love it. But when she got to the second half of the album, that's when she got into her, what we know her for, the pop, upbeat, the ballads, the vocal ability being really being shown off. And she's her, man. She can sing. So Beyonce is a singer, singer. On the scale of one to ten, what do you, what would you grade this? Um, for me, it's it's hard to 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 grade it because it's like. It's damn near two different albums. It's a, it's made for a specific demographic, you know what I mean? And it's it is two different albums. It's I don't know what genre to put it in. She just like she made up a whole new sound. So yeah. So, well, I mean, I can't call it a good or bad album. To be honest with you, it's it's just you unique. Even listen to country. Yeah, I have a country playlist. I do. I enjoy country. I do enjoy country music. I can't. Not I can't. listen to no country. I can't agree with them. I don't listen to country. I, I have like country music. Yeah, I have yeah. like I've listened to some shit. To you know, know come what, on. The, but what you're listening for? That's what I'm saying. Because you were talking so much about like, oh, this should sound like this, and the. I did say it should sound, sound like. I never said it should or, sound like. Yes, you did. You no, I did not. Something about how no, it I sounds did not. like. I original. said traditionally country music yeah, sounds and like this. Yeah, that's where you're saying that the music yeah, should sound like that. You're comparing it like it should. That's I'm, at, what you're I'm asking question. Don't I, involve me. Go ask the Beef, I want to see this. <laughs> I'm asking, did I say it should sound like something? Or did I say this is you what didn't you say it? No, verbatim, no, you did not say that. But you implied it. You oh, definitely implied it. You might have implied it. What did you hear? What did you get from what I said? You might have implied it. You were comparing like, it to I'm the original question. sound. You yeah. were comparing it to the you original sound and everything. So when you were talking you about <laughs> her music was overproduced because it had certain sounds and extra, overproduced. just like you like the original Jolie from Dolly Parton because it sound real basic. And she don't have all them vocals. Dolly Parton that has a very she's a, okay. It sounds very Dolly Parton like she's talking. That's what she said. I did not. Say you did. You did say. In part that you said, he said, but well, he said it was more. No, he said it was more. The emotion was there. Yeah. Was it at a country and it was music? Very is simple. It, country music isn't overproduced. It's, y'all just had a whole. That, that's, that's literally what I just said. No, it's you did not just say Beyonce. You said Beyonce's overproduced. I said you said that Beyonce's is overproduced. I did not and say it's that. very simple. Which is country music being very simple. They can sit on the stool with a guitar. Y'all did say that. Both of y'all said that. And it's you're general. saying that because <laughs> Dolly Parton, she sounds when she sings, she sounds like what she how she speaks. It ain't really no much, that much singing to it. Okay. Beyonce sounds kind of how she speaks. She got that olive oil voice. That what? Olive oil voice. <laughs> she can't help but to sound smooth and clean. Uh, Dolly Parton oh, got that a, old a, rickety kind of like. You, hold on. Uh, where you get that from? You got that from the guy. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think of that album? I um I think it's a wait. Great. Are you are, are you part of the Beehive? Yeah. Oh shit! All right, go ahead. But <laughs> I'm saying, as in, like, I think of it as like a great body of work. Like, I could tell she put some effort in it. She had some. She did a research and you know got certain sounds to make it somewhat country. But she went there, but she didn't go all the way there. She still kept it to herself. That's how I feel too. Like, kept it still Beyonce and still kind of to where it's somewhere relatable. I'm gonna give y'all a lot. And I'm going to give y'all some history, but I'm not going to take it all the way country because I'm not all the way country. That's why I feel like she referred to it as a Beyonce album. And the second half gave you that, okay, this is probably what y'all was looking for because it was a lot more of the, like, some you can bob to, twerk to, maybe a little bit. And always want something to just vibe with, <laughs> with everything. Y'all always want a Sunday, a Saturday brunch <laughs> talk. <laughs> I mean, where well, she gave it to us too, but I felt like it was a pretty good album. I don't necessarily care for a few of those songs at the top because it's so country. I'm not a country person, so I don't really. It just 
It's not for you. Yeah, I like and I like ballads. I like slow songs, R and B, but that was just too far, and it just wasn't even nothing. I feel like I could just turn on. I'm going straight to the second half when I listen to the album. Turn on some of that country shit as soon as like she get. As soon as she like. I don't like, like any of the country stuff that he yeah, plays. Yeah, no matter you know, when she get. And ready, then when I said when I played the song from him, he was like, "Oh, well, basically it was a remake anyway, but it was a black guy." He was remaking a song. When y'all pre in the crib before you leave, put that country shit on. <laughs> <laughs> and ruin the mood. And turn that shit all the way up. Ruin the mood. <laughs> Every time. So is this like, so do you go, are you going back to listen to this? Maybe if I'm working out. Like I said, if I listen to it, it's going, because I like, I like the song with her and Post Malone. I like the Miley Cyrus song. I like a lot of the songs that's like after, like on the act two part. So it's like I have to get halfway through the album to start really like getting into the album that I like. And you didn't like the rapping part? The rapping part? The spaghetti? I really didn't care for it like that. I mean... So if Beyonce's next album is rapping... Well, that's what I was going to say. Because when she was the one with her and Jay-Z, they little... um, Everything is Love. Mm -hmm. That album, when she was rapping... I didn't mind it. It sounded good, but I guess it, it had to deal with the beats. Her husband on the beats too, like the him helping her with certain things. But that spaghetti thing, I just wasn't there. I don't know. I, I don't know. It wasn't all that. I mean, if if Beyonce come out with that rapping album next, y'all gonna be here for it. Nah, I don't like Beyonce rapping. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna pass on that. Her, <laughs> she does not have a rapper's voice at all. At all, like yeah, at all. yeah, no, nah, that's it that's not, not her thing. That. Yeah, that's she not her. She sounds she like she's trying rap. to. Rap. She's trying, like she's like she's emphasizing that yeah, I am yeah, rapping right now. It's not. It doesn't come rap. out natural. Yeah, but yeah, she she could sing rap. I would take that. Yeah. But that's what she does. She do like a little in the midst of her. Do the do the do the little Drake, whatever he be doing. Nah, she can't do the Drake. No, don't do nothing like that, man. Yeah. They got a very similar career. Like I said, don't do nothing like that. <laughs> I mean, you know. But yeah, I mean, the, the album, like I said, I can't say what well, it was bad or good. It's just something. Uh, I added a few of them songs to my playlist. So I ain't gonna lie. Something's just as hard. But. So, the, the album in its entirety, you wouldn't be going back to listen to, but just maybe pick song here and there. I think 16 Carriages is the best song on the album. That, that song is fire. Okay, I listen that. 16 I, Carriages. All right, so I listen, I listen, I listen to about beautiful song. three and a half songs because I listen to Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages. <laughs> but she did make the perfect songs to put out like for like a hint or a drop, whatever, like to get the people talking. Yeah. Because those were definitely two like, they were different but the same because they still had country names. So it gave people like, oh, I wonder what it's going to sound like. Uh, that's so definitely caused some controversy with those songs that she dropped. I liked it. I like both of them. They were solid, actually. They were, they were actually solid. So I, I expected to hear a lot more of that, but then I, the first yeah, song on the like, album, yeah. I was like, "Yeah, she." She was the mashup, like you said. Yeah. It was like a mashup of too many different genres. Yeah, um, I would. I probably would have actually liked it more if she just made a country album. Be honest, if she just made songs like those two songs. Be honest. With you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. kept it a little more uh, simple, stripped down. Because Texas only sixteen characters is the simplest. Part. Yeah, I'm gonna go back and listen to it just, just to hear it. Um, so I'll come back next time with a half take. I ain't giving y'all a full take on that shit. That's, 20, yeah. that's twenty seven songs that I just. But that's, that's a lot of that's a lot of fucking songs. It is, and it's and it's not the easiest album to get through. I'm gonna start. Like, I'm gonna start today and listen to like three songs a day. It is a chore. It's a chore. <laughs> no, but I would say a lot of the songs are like uh, interludes. What do you call those? Like yeah. where they be like twenty four seconds or oh, yeah, one seconds, of like people talking. So it's interludes, literally like yeah. five or six of them on an uh, album. Still maybe twenty songs, but it's still like not all of them are full blown songs. Okay. Um, so was was Act One better than this? Oh, to me, of course. I would not be attending this Beyonce's concert. No, I'm not. <laughs> I, I will leave that to the rest of the people. But so no cowboy boots and uh not hats uh-uh. doing the whole downs and shit. I'm a Beyonce fan, but I'm just not going just be support. Like I support Beyonce, but I'm not going just throw my money just because. She put out someone I want to see her. Like, no, we ain't friends. <laughs> yeah, I don't know which one of them albums, but neither one of them shits was made for me. But at all, <laughs> at all, none of them shits. Which I can understand. Yeah. I can understand. Yeah. The first one definitely was. The first one was, was, was a lot. Definitely was. Yeah, was, was that? Yeah. It was a lot of dancing music. So it was yeah. just a lot of. It was a lot of noise. chaos going. Yeah, it was a lot, a lot of noise. noise. But it was very entertaining. 
very entertaining. The mm-hmm. outfits, the whole thing around it she had going on. Yeah, free, it was free, very free, 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 free you, for sure. Like I said, it wasn't for us. So yeah, definitely. It definitely wasn't my favorite Beyonce era. I would say that. not not by and by a long shot by a long shot by a long shot. But uh, shout out to B. You know what I'm saying keep pushing yeah. the envelope. Um, I mean, if she can make more drunken love, I'll be happy with I'll that. I'll be lucky. <laughs> I mean, that Beyonce album is actually good. That Beyonce album The is next album might be a collab. Her and Jay-Z may do another one. I wouldn't be mad at that. I like their last collab, so. I like their music. Together. I don't know about the last I like their music together. I just, um, I, I actually like that Carter's album, but I don't yeah. want a, I don't want a whole album from them. Not together. Nah, I, I'm cool Jay-Z with it. Jay-Z fellow. I mean, yeah, <laughs> more than likely, but I mean, he doesn't, work, yeah. but he doesn't rap anymore. So, I mean, yeah, I don't, he don't ex- rap, no yeah, he don't rap anymore. I mean, so I don't expect him to, his wife, he might have a lot to say though. Yeah, but I'm just saying, I don't expect him to do it. I don't want, I don't necessarily think I want to hear that from him with that album. Cause I mean, that album was cool, unexpected, random, cool, whatever. But I'm I don't, today. I don't need to do that. I don't need to do that again. Another that thing is, hard. man, I don't, Beyonce has to do a better job at, ex- I don't know what, another reason I, I can't <laughs> vibe with these last two albums, I don't know what she'd be talking about. At I don't have no idea what Beyonce sings about, the message she tries to get across. I don't know who, you what the words mean. You said the message at the beginning. What? Y'all trying to put her in a box of different genres, like that's literally what she was talking about majority of the album. I didn't catch that, that's all I'm saying. I don't know what the fuck them words mean. <laughs> 16 <laughs> carriages. I have no idea what 16 carriages is about. 16 carriages, you, you you just not listening then. You're not listening to understand. You just hear the sound and what she sound like because everything in that song, for real. I know what drunk and love. Take this hold them. I can't even know what that shit like. Whatever. Shit, love is my shit. I don't even say I know what the... Take this hold them. I can see you say you didn't know, but... 16 years is cool. I, I don't know. I don't know. No, I know what give me body. I know what give me body. Yeah, yeah that shit's hard, baby too. Baby boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so. But I know, I, yeah. hold on, but really quick, I do know, like, you know, shout out to Beyonce. She's going to do her thing. But I know two people that we do kind of understand their message. Well, one of them, I don't understand his message. But another one we do. Who, num- who went number one now? You know, Kendrick. Shout out to the GOAT, man. Shout out to this generation's greatest rapper. Definitely went number one. As a matter of fact, five of them songs went number one on the top ten Billboard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Boy Future, two hundred fifty thousand first week. Yep, Future and Metro. I want to say that was his second or third highest selling project in his career, and he's fifteen years in. Mm-hmm. Let's let's recognize greatness. How impossible that is for people at the point in this in their careers, run, especially in twenty twenty four. Oh yeah, that, no, that's especially in twenty twenty four. Because, you know, you look at the way people who've done numbers in the past, you know, like, you know, you Beyonce's, the Drake's, right. those people who, you know, 800,000, 800, 700 here, here, and now they're here. But it's still compared to where we at today where people right. are not exactly. buying physical albums. You're still doing through 200 or more is a lot. 200 or more is a lot of albums. You got people that some of the, the hottest rappers right now can't get over 120. Who the hottest right now? No, I'm, I'm saying some of them. I'm asking. But I mean, like, at a point in time, well, oh, shit, I don't even know who I am. Like, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But I'm saying, but like, for instance, like when, when Dirk was really hot at the top, he wasn't. Oh, yeah, he wasn't doing nothing. 21 time. Savage. On his run, wasn't doing more than 150. Nah, that's correct. So, you know, so it's these people. Lil Baby wasn't doing when he was running shit. So it's just those things. Nah, like Lil that. Baby was doing numbers. He did numbers that first album? No, yeah. Uh, I think it's only me. I don't know. But baby do numbers. I'm I'm be, I'm be honest with you. Okay. Yeah, or look. Lil Baby. Lil Baby. Lil Baby. I don't know what the baby I don't, is. Yeah, I don't even know what he be doing nowadays. I don't want to see that shit. Yeah, Lil Baby sold 216,000. Okay, okay. Now, well, that's that second one. And the crazy thing is they say he falling off. That's a lot of fucking albums. He, they did say he's falling off right now. But nah, get back to your man Kendrick, man. You know, he dropped he dropped another he dropped another you know, verse. You know, he ain't never been accused of falling off. That's what we know. He ain't never been accused. Yeah, because he disappeared. Never, <laughs> yes, never he disappeared. Never disappeared. Yeah, Folks don't like to count the projects. Never. That's hey. not called disappearing. That's called you ain't got to be in people's face all the time. That's the problem with y'all generation. Y'all want all this immediate shit all the time because y'all got Drake bum ass dropping <laughs> bullshit every single year. <laughs> you gonna say that shit. Back in the year, being active and being immediate. I mean, dropping immediate. The- Whatever albums and all this on songs or verses all the time, they don't mean. 
Yeah, that means he got a love for the rap game and he just wants to rap and exactly. sing. And he just wants to. Because Sizzle went no five features. years. Kendrick no. do get features. Kendrick do get features. Rare. It ain't rare. I don't know, bro. It ain't rare. It ain't before, like... Before this, before this feature, what do you have? Man, first of all, we can go to before, Black Panther soundtrack. We can go Untitled, Unmastered. We can go... Got I said before... Black before, 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 before this feature... Before this feature... Before this feature... We asked the Baby King. I mean, bro, come on, dog. We, we, we got a lot of features. Album. We got SZA, probably. Come on, dog. And that's his cousin. What that? I'm, it's answering well, the question. The Baby King song was what? I'm just answering the question. That may have to deal with his album. I mean, his... No, that was that was Baby King's project, yeah. So we got the we 2017, we got future. You know what I'm saying? We got Sir. We got Beyonce last year. Like, what are y'all talking about? Okay, last year. Like, I, I, come I, I, on. I'm just talking no, 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 really, saying. We I got the Taylor Swift. Swift. That's all I'm, I'm, I'm answering asking. the question. What y'all want me to do? I said, I said what was last year. What y'all want me to do? We got Miguel. We got all kind of features in Oh, there. I never said he didn't get featured. I was saying before this. Y'all said he don't be dropping no music. I'm answering the question. Know. question. He been dropping music this entire time. Y'all mad because he's been doing features. I mean, that's part of music. J. Cole, no, they dropped the album in years. Ain't nobody saying yeah. he is. And they said he fell off. That's why he named no, his the album to fall off. He said that about himself. It don't matter. Yeah, yeah, they, it they, don't they, matter. Hold on. They, 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 they never fell. said they he said he at the top right now. Right yeah. now. But that's after he done revamped and did all these features nah. and got back in here done collab with certain people, then did a tour with Drake. Like, he done did so much to get back. His last name. album was his biggest success. Well, I ain't going to say his best success. It was. But that yeah. counter, it was counter, his, that, the bank. The off season was, was huge. Yeah, it was. That was the last one? Yes. Oh, I thought it was the other one. And he, he did a mixtape too. That's what I'm saying. Y'all don't y'all be counting stuff because y'all be recognized these as the greatness. As a, y'all want full body projects. Y'all want albums. So they be dropping music. I ain't say nothing. I just did say that. You did say that. I said, when was the last feature prior to this one for Kendrick? I'm saying, I just if you, told you. No, hey, that's fine. I just told you. I'm saying, if you if you listen a little bit more, you Okay, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, right, right. That's I'm just saying, yeah. And, and when he come out, number one's right. I don't know. I don't know. What, what he did with Mr. Morale and the Steppers? Three hundred thousand. No one. Okay. More than J Cole. Ooh. Yo, you a hater? <laughs> <laughs> you a hater? Why do you hate J Cole so much? Not nah, they, they in competition right now. I'm just saying. Why do you hate J Cole so much, though? Oh, Jason Cole. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with y'all? Uh, for your allergy. Y'all need to put some respect on this. The problem is we need Not more artists like that so we ain't got to deal with this bullshit all the time. That's what we really need. So let me you ask you. fed up, sir. You fed up with Drake. <laughs> That's what we really need. No, I'm just saying. You fed up with Drake. <laughs> I'm just saying, people pick and choose. SZA took forever to come out. Ain't nobody said nothing about it. She took five years to drop that project. But SZA was... SZA was what? Since it was what? Exactly. 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 That's my point. That's my exact point. You were picking and choosing, man. But she was giving verses. She was giving body, hair, new body, oh. new face. She was outside. I mean, she looked good, but. Well, he was he was wasn't out in these streets. We don't know what he be. No, I can't. He was in Africa. He don't be doing using nothing. Those streets, using real streets. Jay Cole wasn't doing none of that. Uh, and he been like famous. Jay Cole refused to drop out. <laughs> he he did everything but drop out. But so, how do you feel about you know now that Future does have another album coming out this week? He does. Oh, is it this week? This week. Or yeah, he ain't talking about it. Or it's either this week or the 29th one of them. It's this month. I know. Yeah, this month. So. um do you feel I've heard little rumblings that Kendrick has something else coming too? Really? Yeah, I have. So I mean, I now to the extent of what it's going to be, it's not going to be an album. They're saying more of it towards that he just and it's not time for a Kendrick album. It's yeah, too soon. give us and, next year. But they're saying it's towards the fact of him just kind of going at people now. Oh, I mean, it's beautiful for hip hop music, man. He's so, beautiful. He's him, and he's the best at going at people. Now, with that being said, do you? All right, just from a fan of rap music and just music in general, mm-hmm. would you like to hear a response from Drake and Cole, or just Drake or just Cole? Would you? Would you like to hear a response? Yeah, I think we all would like to hear a response, man. I'm, I mean, honestly, I can do without Drake music for a little while, but mm-hmm. in terms of if you want to about Kendrick. I definitely want to hear what he got to say. Okay. 
I mean, I don't know what angle he could use because, you know, man, with rap battles, it comes with what angle you what angle You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. Uh, Cole can be very general and just rap really well because he does that yeah, every yeah. fucking time. And people yeah. act like he's the greatest rapper of all time every time he do it. I mean, he's a good, really good rapper. I mean, he can drink, but okay. you're right, he's good. I'm not trying to discredit. <laughs> Drake, people like to dig into what the actual disses are a lot of times. So yeah. When you trying to diss somebody like Kendrick, what is there to say? There has to be an angle that should come with. What is there to say? You're talking about somebody that's just as well respected in the rap game. Yeah. Just as probably impactful. A little bit more probably. Pro- probably so, yeah. You know, when it comes to rap. Correct. You know, music is one thing, but rapping. And Correct. Rap Correct. Yeah. So. It's really no part of the rap industry that Kendrick is not just as respected, just as revered, and just as impactful in. Yeah. As Drake. Performance, his performance is amazing. His yeah, tour is amazing. Yeah. His album's amazing. Singles, he get. I mean, it's so. I don't know. What, I don't know what he could say about it other than like these guys. I, maybe I, I put him on my first. Um, the first album. Was first the first uh, um, tour. First tour. Uh, yeah. maybe the take care angle. He put him yeah. on the. I don't know. But don't to know. me, that doesn't. You don't. I don't think you win with that. But what can he win with? That's that's the thing I'm trying to ask. See, yeah. Um, how could he be? How how could Drake beat Kendrick Lamar? He can't because he don't have. First off, he needs to get to a place where he can at least like find something in him to where he can get some good verses out. Like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to search inside himself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. He has to give a TED talk and shit, so he might be searching but, himself. Nah, that's a good like, point you made though. So I'm glad you said that because you got to think about it. Something. What Drake has surrounded himself in the last few years has been nothing but younger microwave yep younger generation yep. with the hot song with a hot wave yep he's and he ain't been around these rap he ain't been around wayne he ain't been around rappers well when i mean he now came, he's around wayne right now because i'm saying tour. like music wise and yeah. that music that when he came out he was trying to keep up with wayne's level of rapping, rapping and yeah. this is prime wayne yeah he not around Rick Ross and them no more. Yeah, no. You know what I'm saying? He ain't putting on the instrumentals and just rapping like that no more. Yeah. He ain't with DJ Khaled where they trying to see who got the best verse on the on the song of the summer. Yeah, he, yeah. He's not. You know. You know what? That that's he's a good trying point. to out rap twenty one. You know what? Oh, that's crazy. By the way, um, out rapping right. a little yacht. Yeah, but you know what's funny? rap just like him. Like he yeah, rap just like him. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. So with that being said, that's funny because Why I just kept Young Thug cooked him on that views album. But that's too good. <laughs> it wasn't views. Whatever he's talking. It was more life. Yeah, but um, that was a good point that you said that he was he's not doing what he was doing with the DJ Khaled album. Yeah, that was a that was a point in hip hop where if you have a number of rappers on a song, correct, you want a certain verse, you want a certain point in the in the song, and you want to make sure that your verse is last, is last, yeah. or it, and if it's not last, it's at first. I it's- am the beast. It's feed because, me rappers and feed yeah, me beasts. You yeah. want to put the that's how you knew who was the best in a song too because it's like the first person that you started like oh this song coming on the other ones you might be like okay I buy my you can do one out but the last, the last one, that's the reason like, that I'm listening to this yeah, song is yeah. because I want to hear this last that's verse fact, like, yeah. I need to go through all this just to the get West Freeze you know what I'm saying yeah. yeah what's what's the name God God did, God did. All that, yeah yep. so, like, you know, disrespect DJ Khaled like that you know, you said earlier. Definitely. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I, I'm not saying that he did, but yeah, I just I agree with that part where you know you're not even putting yourself you're not, yeah. next. So, and Cole made a point when he was on the Lil Yachty shit about how you know everybody kept saying that he outdid Drake, and mm-hmm. he said Drake didn't want to do it. But no, what I'm saying to that point, Drake is not even trying at this point. He's like he, I think he's where he got to find himself where he don't think that he can rap better than certain people. Cause is you, that where you think he is in his career? Yeah. Because, I mean, think, think about this, right? Think about, he he can't rap but to a certain tier anymore. Yeah. And so, like you said, before he was keeping up with these people, you know, he did. Remember, if you look at his old albums and, like, old records he did, he was doing it with rappers. Yeah. You know, he was doing it with the Wayne. He had Eminem. He had a Jay-Z. He had Jeezy. He had, he was doing it with rappers. Don't call Jeezy a rapper. But, I mean, he is a rapper, though. But, I mean, he ain't, he's not, like, you know. But I'm just saying, he was more of that. He was going towards that lane of like, let me try to keep up bar for bar with this person or whatever. With the Cole joint, you he melted in. Yeah. Cole got on the track and went at him, and he wanted to be tough. <laughs> he didn't know what to say. Yeah. He I had mean, to come with a second verse because he didn't know what to say. Is it, it PTSD? Last time he tried to go bar for bar with somebody, what happened to him? Well, to me, it might be. 
It might be, but what what he did was he just went at the person that wasn't rapping. <laughs> so I don't know what he what his angle he was going for, but he went at the person that wasn't rapping. And even then, last time he got into it with the guy, with the writers, album for album, rollout for rollout, double performance. It didn't look good for that either. Donda, CLB, the Free Level Hoover concert when he okay. kind of tried to make it a versus. He kind of did try to make it a versus. Kind of, he kind of exactly. did that for that shit. <laughs> kind of asshole for that for real. I'm just saying, and what Drake do? He, they, they could say he wasn't prepared or whatever. It didn't look like he was there to compete for real. He wasn't. But I don't That's think. That's my point. But I don't think he takes. I don't think he's in. He's no longer to me like. He's no longer in. The competitor mode of I'm I'm still good here. I disagree. It's, no, no, no. This is what I'm about to say, right? It's like that one rap. It's like that basketball player who's just like, I'm on a fair world tour. I'm just cool coming off the bench. I get my points. I get my minutes, and I'm cool here. I know I'm not. This this nigga's too young, and he's too good at this. And the people who are somewhat my age are still moving better than I am, and I can't move that way. It's like when Vince Carter was on his last legs, pretty much just coming in. Let me get a few shots up. And I would agree with you if. Drake wasn't coming off some of the most relevant years of his career. Also, he's the same age as these dudes that yeah, are going at him. But I'm saying he does. Cole, I think he has that fear in him or some pictures. I think no. I'm saying is that it's not that he's not. He just I think he believes he's not on that level. There has to be something, or it's one of two things. He believes he's not on that level, or he just thinks he's more superior that he doesn't have to do it. Maybe I don't know. All I know is. Uh, Cole's next album is going to be extremely critical. It is for oh, his gonna career. Go back and, and for his a song, change the verse. That's all I know. Because he gotta have something. Because this, the guy they've been crowning as the best rapper for the what this year two, year three straight, yeah. like definitively. Yeah, for the last definitively. They've been saying the big three is now. This Cole. is him. Yeah, as the best, doing the best rapping the off season. He straight up bars on there with the camera intro. Yeah. Kendrick decided to do his artistic shit. Still had a, a couple of hits on there, but it wasn't like full fledged rap. Like with the exception rap. of the same we dropped, the Nipsey, you know what I'm saying? Tribute to the Heart Park Five um, and the Baby King verse. King, yep. But Fever. this is the guy. So yeah. when it's smoke, it's fire. If he don't look at Kendrick, and the crazy thing is because Kendrick ain't really going go at him like that on the song. Nah, he, he, he kind of yeah. mentioned, but he was really, he know who his aim is at yeah. at all times. But. You gotta take that personally. You gotta. Take, why is he talking to this nigga? And I'm on here killing him. And, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm <laughs> ripping him apart right now. It's like I, I even, I even got on an interview and said that I was because he's not looking yeah. at it like that. Well, I am. It's like when uh, James Harden said he the best player in the world, and everybody ignored him. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who? Stop it! Who? Who? Stop, Stop it, bro. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, I don't. I want to see a response both from much, much. Yes. I definitely want to see a response from both of them. I um I would rather see the response strictly from Cole than um Drake. Why? Just simply because I don't want to unless Drake is coming out to rap. Yeah. And not make a bop. I don't. You can't. To me, you definitely can't beat Kendrick with a with a song. Nah, you just you can't make Miller. No. Yeah, you I can't beat Miller. Yeah. Why? Because that's because well, Kendrick's gonna come out again and really rap in. You see what this song is doing. If it's a number one, you, you're not going to make a better song. You're not going to like a, you have to because you're not going to have Metro, so you got to have so, so you, you don't have to have. Unfair, right yeah, now, because no, you got, no, you got no, to about this. I'm not going to say that, but because it's not that Drake makes bad songs, but Drake has a thing where you don't really hear him rapping like that, and Kendrick gets on a song like this where I don't really hear Kendrick on Metro beats, so not only to get on a Metro beat, but to he changed his flow up a few times to fit in a certain pocket. And to really get on, like he went, t- he took straight aim at you. Drake does a lot of playing with words, goes around and shit, and he wants people to sing along. Nobody wants to sing along right now. Nobody wants to hear that. And I don't want, I don't want to. You not again. It's not Meek Mill. Yeah, and I think um, Kendrick just literally checked off all boxes on the dish. You got the ad libs, you got mm-hmm. the voice changing, you got the beat. Then you got the beat going crazy after and, the verse. Oh, after just, the verse, yeah. That first of all, that shit. Yeah. Metro started fucking Metro. <laughs> That was, yeah, it was that was Metro this too. Too much of a moment. So I think if Drake is going to rap, he has to be like, he has to change the direct. He got to deflect. He has to deflect if like direct uh, divert the attention to something different. Yeah. So what is 
do you think he has a time? Like, do we need to do something soon? Or does this, like, be well, cool out? Here's, like, how I look, else? here's how I look at it. He has a time, but to an extent, because... This is not only just kindred diss in you. You That's also have a future diss. You also have a, um, not necessarily a diss, but somewhat with Rick Ross. Yeah. So you have to you have to think about Future's about to drop another album. You don't know what's, unless you heard it, because you know everybody in rap some, sometimes hear other shit. Unless you heard it already, you don't have anything to say yeah. until you see what Future says again. And I think that's, I mean, that's also gives... Drake a bell out because he could just drop a song that addresses everybody and not be direct and have a straight up rap. And uh, with Kendrick, he can because he got to diss future too. He got to address future. Correct. He, he can. can. He can do that. He can. But I'm and I'm actually okay with that. Yeah, if he, I am if he too, does yeah. that. If if you go at it like that, if you pull a make and just go at everybody, I don't. I mean, nobody really say names at this point. But if you just go at everybody straight up, yeah. you put a blanket statement out, and you just going at all these niggas. It just got to be some bars that we know are clear cut towards this two group of yeah. guys or these two people. Yeah, like that little TED Talk shit that he did on his tour. I don't want to hear that shit, bro. <laughs> I'm standing ten feet tall on my back if straight. If he was smart, he would do what he did with Pusha. And this Kanye the most, and this push a little bit. <laughs> a little bit yeah. So I'm gonna push, I'm gonna this future the most. Call my bitch, call my got my money, I'll take all your hoes. Yeah, and yeah. I'm gonna say, can she, you don't really, you don't <laughs> yeah, get rap better. Yeah, 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 I would say good. Go back to future. <laughs> Go back to yeah. future. I agree. That's what I would say. That, that would make the most sense because for, sure. for the weakest link. You gotta be yeah. strategic, man. You gotta be strategic yeah. with this. It's just like basketball, man. Give me the right matchup. I'm not trying yeah, to play one on one with Kawhi Leonard. Right every this fucking pick time, on this though. Video. Get JJ Riddick ass <laughs> over here, and I'm a cookie. With that being said, including the beef, what do you think of Drake Rick Ross beef look like? Um, I don't think Rick Ross has ever lost a beef, so that's gonna be tough. <laughs> He's <laughs> he, 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 as much Rick as I thought, is, as much as I thought Fifty Cent ain't never lose a beef. Rick, Rick Ross, Ross is he, invincible, man. He yeah. is has one of the best careers you could probably ask for as far as a hip hop artist. He been relevant all this time, music or no music. When he drops projects, everybody likes him. He yeah. got so many. He got club hits. He got deep cuts. Like he just hit. He just went in. His catalog is crazy. His catalog is ridiculous. And yeah. he, just, he has one of the best ear for beats. Not only his that, production is just fucking ridiculous. It sounds you, rich. You got the like the the trademark house in the hip hop. Literally, like you you have the Literally. house. Him saying that it's just the bar for. Visuals, you know what I'm saying? It might not be the greatest house, but it's like, yeah. no, my mansion is my mansion, yeah. And I'm gonna promote it, I'm gonna put animals, it's just different. Yeah. So it's just a, his wing stop now, this shit's everywhere. Check it, like he's him, Rick Ross is him, but like in rapping, like just the straight up, like you know, this for this type thing. Because I mean, I think I like Rick Ross, Rick Ross can rap, yeah. So, what do you do you see that being competitive at all, or? Yeah, I think Rick, I mean because Rick Ross would probably just call uh, call somebody and, and have them diss them together type shit. Like Rick Ross is nice. Yeah. Okay. Rick Ross made great music. Yeah. So who you think went out of the future and Drake battle though? Whoever gets uh, doesn't get emotional about it first. Who do you see getting emotional first? Depends on what I gotta wait to see what Drake response is. Okay. I gotta wait to see what Drake responds. That, that's where I feel like he, that's the only like route he has to take because he 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 gonna be like yo I fucked your bitch. <laughs> I feel like they both gonna say that. It's just gonna who's gonna say it first? Yeah, and uh, uh, don't let Future get back to back number ones or back to back two fifties. Then it's gonna be a whole another conversation. So then you have but then yeah. to me then at that point as Drake you have to say something. You have to drop one song that does do whatever number, but you have to say something. You have to address it all. I think the worst thing for Drake would be is just to ignore it and let Future dominate this year. This and whole summer? Yeah. Yeah, this, it's going to be ridiculous. He can't... Yeah. Drake has to... Not only to me, you have to respond like after this next album come out, but then you have to drop something this summer. Yeah. If you're in that... If that feud is going on, because, you know, they started looking back at all of these little messages that her loss, the songs on her loss was about Future... You know, the what will Pluto what will Pluto do was a diss to future shit like that. So you kinda have to drop something. And he better pray at the same time Thug don't get out of jail. Oh no, if he, he should give him that first song oh, gosh. out of jail. No, 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 Ooh. no. Drake gotta be there to pick that up. Drake gotta That's be there. how you win. Right That's there. how Drake wins. Drake gotta be there to pick that up. Thug out of jail. <laughs> Drake gotta pick Thug That's up right now. If you wanna be future and Kendrick there, get Thug out yeah, of jail. Get Thug out of jail right now. Give him his first song. 
But I, I Thug probably gonna be like, I don't want no parts of it. No, honestly, to be he really honest, I think that I honestly think that thugs will sign with future. That's I not like that's what I say. I feel like he'd probably be like, I don't want no parts of it. He already yeah, done I, I too much. Yeah, yeah, he probably did. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's not trying to be for y'all. I just want to make music. I just got a jail. Yeah, I'm trying to do this already. But I'm saying, if he had to pick a side, I think it will be with future. Simply for longevity and it's Atlanta, too. I mean, Drake is still longevity as well, but like no, I'm talking said, about longevity as in I think Future and Thug have been more connected than um, Drake and Drake and Thug has been. It would be more beneficial to side with Future simply because like Atlanta's back, Atlanta's home. We miss, you know, what I'm saying it would just yeah, be such yeah, a moment for it'll, it'll make more sense. The city and Atlanta just got five of the top ten. Right before, yeah, and Thug come back, he drops on it. Yeah, it'll just be, it'll be too much momentum. Yeah, it wouldn't make sense to side with, with Drake. With yeah. Drake, in my opinion, and then don't let Thug get twenty one and Future on the same. You know, See now, on. hold on, first of all, yeah, it'd be, it'd be <laughs> that's why twenty one ain't saying nothing because <laughs> as soon as Thug come home, twenty one like, oh shit. Because those two actually like have been clearly have a relationship with your Thug and uh, twenty one. Yeah, uh, easy. Future and Thug was more competitors for a, while for a while before they actually teamed up and became like the super team type mm-hmm. shit. But yeah. So we'll see, man. We'll see. Hopefully, I hear some shit now. Wonder, man. Yeah, man. Um, you know, obviously, it's been uh, really highly anticipated with the women's side of things. Correct. You know, we have some of the biggest, you know, NCAA stars that we've seen in a long time. You have your Caitlin Clark, who's the leading Division One basketball player scoring. You have Angel Reese, who is you know one of the highest paid NIL players. Um, you LSU. had, you know, Iowa, LSU, and Iowa. LSU and Iowa. Then you had on the other side, Juju Watkins and Paige Buchers, Buckers. Yeah. You know, she was one of the first athletes too to get one of them um, in Iowa deals. She was, she was hurt before she got hurt for sure. She was. How do you forget? She was, she was the one in college. She was, she was the absolute one right there. Yes. Um, she's, she's still showing it. But before we get to that, let's get into the the biggest game that happened. Caitlin Clark versus Andrew Reese, Iowa versus LSU. Um, you watched the game? Nah, I ain't watched the game, but I, I did keep up with the highlights and the stats and all that in real time. Okay. Uh, I did not get a chance to watch it, no. I didn't watch it completely. I was in and out, but um, it was a hell of a game. Yeah. I will say it was a hell of a game. Um, Caitlin Clark clearly shows her capability, but on the other side, I feel like LSU – did that little girl, did Haley, um, Haley Van Lithen. did her dirty. <laughs> then they did her dirty. They set her up for failure. Um, But yeah, Angel Reese actually played really well. She ended up getting hurt. She still played through it. So she, ankle, up, yeah. Yeah, she, she ain't gonna give any excuse. I can't give any excuse for her. But, you know, she ended the game with like 19 and 20. 17 and 20. 17 and 20? Yeah, yeah it's ridiculous. 17 and 20, three blocks. And then... Two still something like that, and then Fly, Fly J dropped a nice little twenty piece on it too. She yeah, was, and she's good. Yeah. And she's nice too. And then you know on the other side of the ball, Caitlin Clark gave you forty one. Man, forty one. Forty one and what though? Forty one and twelve. And, yeah. Forty one points, twelve assists, seven rebounds. Seven rebounds. Yeah. She had like how many threes she had now? She had nine out of twenty three. She, she shot twenty three points. She had twenty three points. She shot twenty three points. I don't know what the record is for an individual game, but twenty three points. It's a lot of fucking threes though. It's that's a not a mile for twenty like field goal threes. percentage. That's a mile twenty. <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah, that's 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 nuts. So um yeah, it was a highly anticipated game, you know. Iowa came out with the victory. Um Kayla Carr is nice. Yeah, man, uh they calling her the, one of the greatest. I've seen people say she's the greatest woman basketball player mm-hmm. ever. I've seen people say they have never seen somebody more spectacular in college sports, period. Okay. College basketball, pardon me, than mm-hmm. Caitlin Clark. Okay. Now, I will say, I don't agree, but. as a casual watcher of college sports, mm-hmm. that I have never seen anybody... In the woman's game, mm-hmm. pull up from further <laughs> on a regular basis yeah. with that accuracy mm-hmm. in my life. Yeah. Dominance. Okay. Straight dominance. And the men, we've seen that quite a few times. We've seen the Jimmer for Dads and all yeah. that. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. But in women's, and also Jimmer wasn't wasn't doing what Caitlin was doing. He, you know what I'm saying? I'm just keeping it high. These 40-point yeah. games, she, she averaging 30. 31. Plus. 
And she has been, she came in as a freshman averaging 26. The next year she averaged 27. The next year she averaged 28. This year she averaged 30. Like it's, 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 it's gotten absurd. It's yeah, like, no, nah, it's really like It's that. gotten really ri- ridiculous. I agree. So, I mean, I think she got an argument for it. If she win this, she definitely has an argument for being the greatest ever. Of course, they're going to throw in the Cheryl Swoops and the, the Mari Moores and all that, but they weren't playing no fucking Iowa. They wasn't playing on no Iowa with some bums, some average Joes that ain't going to be on nobody's WNBA team. Adam James. So. I respect that. I'm just saying. I, um, I, I get you. Like, nobody's pulling up like that. Nobody's doing that in the women's that I'm seeing. Um, what I will say is that, personally, as an overall basketball, because I've watched them play, but I watch, um, I'm a UConn fan. Okay. Um, I think Paige is better as a straight basketball player. I think, of course, Kayla Clark can shoot out, shoot the lights out of everybody in the building, but as a basketball player, I she's think that. Her game is more suited for well roundedness for sure. She's well, more well yeah. rounded. Um, so that's what I look at it as, but don't get me wrong. You're not wrong in what you're saying or what anybody's saying where she has the argument to probably be the best college women's basketball player. I mean, she leads, she leads them in points. Don't nobody make it look that good. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's exciting. It's, it's exciting. You know, she's she coming across half. She's doing what Steph does and what Dame does, coming across half court and boom, like automatic. It's definitely uh, the Steph Curry influence because that shit is. Yeah, it's it's actually ridiculous. Honestly, she's she's dribbling to the left, fading to the left. It's like all right, you doing a lot. So. But, I mean, I, I respect it. I mean, yeah, shout out to uh, Caitlin Clark. I mean, uh, injuries had some comments to say after the game. She said ever since she won that national championship, it's been uh, quite a few things. That, yeah, some death threats. Uh, she said she's been sexualized. She's been attacked. Uh, what's your thoughts on that, man? And to say that after uh, the loss. Um, It's tough. We we've played sports, um, you know, played sports for a long time. I think those certain things will can contribute to you know your mindset of going into a game and things like that. Um, never go victim blame because if that's what's happening, that's fucking that's disgusting. I mean, I will say on the internet after that she won that when they won that ring, people have said crazy shit. Yeah, you know, on the internet, you know, and people on the internet say whatever the fuck they feel because they think they're invincible, but. I will say after that particular game, I wouldn't have said that. Maybe later on, you know, after because you know they're gonna still get coverage. They're still gonna talk to them, ask them what's next about the league and things like that. But after the game, I wouldn't put. I wouldn't have done it personally, just simply because I felt like, you know, I I wouldn't want to make an excuse or you know come in here and try to you know like. Oh man, like I don't, I don't want to. I personally wouldn't want to, like you know, I don't need you to feel sorry. We came in, we played, we played hard, we did everything we could. My whole team did what they could, and we just took the hell. Yeah, I just happened to be a better team that night. We had, they had a better player than that night, but that's just me. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, it's tough because I mean, she's everything she's saying is has some validity to it, mm-hmm. but I do think when people lose. The one thing they do not like to admit is somebody who's just out better, uh, just better than them, so just outplayed play them. them. Yeah. Um, especially like you said, they are a champion. She is a champion. You know what I'm saying? Can't take and, it away. And they had high hopes of uh, double back and repeating. So when you just get, and that's the team you beat last year. It is, and and that's the moment that actually propelled you to fame. It is. You're doing all Both this. You're doing showing the ring. Yep. So. Uh, when somebody like that, and, and it's not like the team just came and they just all around outplayed you, Caitlin Clark was cooking their ass. Yeah. Cooking them. Yeah. Literally. Everybody on that team got buckets. It was no switching that would have made a, a lick of difference. Now, was the adjustments could have been made? Sure. But, I mean, you got you got somebody that is defining what greatness is in basketball in front of you. The hardest thing to do in real time, bro. <laughs> is shoot from distance. That's the hardest thing to do. That's the hardest skill to develop in basketball. Yeah. And doing that off the dribble with people guarding you. It's just the hardest At spot. will. Yeah. And you got the green light to shoot whenever you, you want, want to. Mm-hmm. It's very difficult to guard. It's the reason why 
Steph Curry has went from just a very good player to now they're trying to throw him in some in one of the greatest players of all time. When all he mainly does is just shoot. I mean, you look at Dan making top seven balls. Exactly, exactly. When you got people that have a, a much better all around game that impact the game in multiple different ways, shooting is that important because it's that difficult to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's only one Steph Curry, like I said, it's only one Dame Leonard, there's only one Clay Thompson. I mean, and that's at, throughout the history of the game. I mean, yeah, you're talking about, and then you have to go a little people who was looking at Ray Allen's and Reggie Miller's. Exactly. And so And now the name's not even in the in the in the conversation for three point shooting. I mean junior. look how long it's taking somebody like LeBron to LeBron just the other night, nine to ten from the three point line. Yeah. You no offense to LeBron, greatest, but you're not gonna see that again from him. But that was the that was the second time he did. He tied his Oh he's that's the second time. Oh yeah, okay. But again, but I'm saying, look how difficult that is when people like yeah, exactly. the Steph, the Clay, the Dames have been. They throw up ten threes a game, it's like it's water. So like, yeah, she's she literally defined that, and yeah, it's a little more of an excuse. Yeah, man, but I mean, I, I yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, the I sexualization say- thing I thought was a little strange because that's I thought that's what she was leaning into. She just wanted to be a model, and she's been showing off her body and all that. Yeah, she's been a, a little bit more. Yeah, she's been doing the, like lingerie shoots and things. I, like a lot that. of the stuff she posts on social media is not basketball related at all. Agreed. So that's a little tough to uh, to kind of receive from her. But at the end of the day, she's a young girl. You know what I'm saying I, I, yeah. I understand why she wants to kind of divert the energy off the loss and you know what I'm saying get some support. Because I mean, she is a, a very good player, and she will be in, in the league soon. Yeah, she will. I think so. I think she might go into draft this year, unless it's next. A but. lot of people don't want her to. I mean, she's making all this money, and um, yeah, she make more money. We want her to develop a little more of a skill set because her skill set is a little limited. She, it is. She, she can't she's not making jumpers, like and she's yeah. not getting free throws. So, um, but WNBA, it's, it's plenty of room for players like that. So definitely, but is definitely. she gonna be the star she is now? It's gonna be tough. There's not many Candace Parkers, you know what I'm nah. saying? And, and B. Stewie's running around yeah, with so. I'll tell you this though. 2024-2025 season, WNBA. I'm going to the game and see Oh yeah, definitely. Clark. Oh yeah, I'm going. Them tickets to get in that college game, they were charging seven hundred dollars. That's fucking ridiculous. Record setting to see her Record play. Ridiculous. And you think I ain't going to pay money to see Caitlin Clark in my city? You got your fucking mind. Yeah. Her and Paige. Oh yeah, definitely. Easy money. Um would you did you watch any of these games? The uh, men's games? No, nah, the uh, nah, men's play next game. I'm talking about. Did you watch the UConn and uh, USC game? I didn't. Oh, I heard they're trying to ice Juju out though. I heard they try to ice her out. I didn't watch that game because that was a little later. Um, Juju did shoot nine of twenty five. That's that's her typical stats though. It's her typical stats. So um, I will say that UConn got a history of being great too, but yeah. USC was ranked. And then, but. Paige just did what she did. You know, they both had a great stat line. I think Paige had 28 and 10. 28, 10, and 6. Then yeah. Triple double. Juju she had, had 29, 10, and 2. So, yeah, I just think that uh, it was great. I think Juju's going to be – Juju's next up right after Paige. Listen, because of the way been doing that. Yeah, she, she was going crazy today, um, yesterday. I think Paige is nice. But we know – I think Paige is doing exactly what we expected her to do. Paige is that good. That's the thing. I don't want people to forget that Paige was the Caitlin Clark. Literally. Before Caitlin she tore Clark. ACL. And Caitlin Clark was scoring all the points that whole time. Paige was the one that they were saying, oh, this is the face of women's yeah. basketball. And she just tore her ACL. Tore so. her ACL. She was out for a while. And, yeah, it kind of messed up her momentum. But she's always been that good. She's she's. she's yeah. Skill, Kobe S, fadeaways. You know what I mean? She, yeah, she, she got. She all does around. exactly what she's what we she's thought she was nice. going to be, being she's that nice. great of a player. So, and I mean, seeing that translate to Juju as well, it's showing a lot. Like, I, the women's game has transformed yeah, a lot. That definitely, I agree with you. Shout out to the women's basketball. Yeah, y'all yeah, been doing a lot, this getting is. that coverage, and I just, I'm finally happy to get acknowledgement. You know. Yeah. And so you know, it just yeah. brings a light, shed shed more light to the game because I'd rather watch this in some of the NBA games right now. For sure, man. I, I definitely remember when, um, like, w- there would be stars highlighted in the women's side, like, mm-hmm. coming into the league. The Skylar Diggins, the Brittany Griners, yep. the Ella Della Don. Yo, yeah. I remember when she came in. She came in the league going. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, it's it's great to see that we got three, well, really a few, more than three, but I'm yeah. just talking about the Paige, the Juju, and the Caitlin Clark from the guard mm-hmm. position. 
that's really going to light the league on fire and really take it to the next level because it's time for their sport to grow. It is. It's about it's that definitely time. definitely time. It's about that time, really. I agree. Yeah. And again, to me, it's right now, I'm looking at the way basketball looks from the NBA and then, like, like just looking at college because to me, college has always been kind of, like, big to an extent. But yeah. you're seeing a woman's side being, to me, I'm, again, more interested in some of these NBA games. These NBA games, they aren't even trying. Yeah, that shit just I looks, agree, for sure. They just out there just doing their job. I'd definitely rather watch Caitlin Clark and Paige play them. Yeah. So, just these goofball-ass niggas, man. By the way, Saturday, the NCAA men's play, UConn, let's go. So, yeah, I'm just going to say to see UConn. UConn with DJ Burns about to cook one of the niggas' ass up. Uh, yeah, you no, UConn play against DJ Burns. I know. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Nah, he ain't he about to do that. Okay. He ain't about to do that. Oh, boy, is that you know what I'm saying? Zach no, no, Randolph. but you know what? I will say yeah. that he is Zach Randolphish player, and I really, I actually like him. I like how he's he's been low key the whole time, and he's coming out. He's just playing basketball. You can't. He's a big body. You can't move him. I got. Ooh, they playing. He playing Zach Eady though in Purdue. Yeah. Yeah. You can Y'all should get to the. Uh, y'all should. Get yeah, to yeah. The we should definitely check championship playing Alabama. Um. Yeah. DJ Burns might get cooked on the way. Eady. I don't know. Eady, nice. He's solid. He's not gonna be good in the league. For college basketball, I'm yeah. saying for college basketball, that yeah, style right. of play. Yeah, that's right. all I'm talking about. You're right. You absolutely yes. right. I, and you know what I like about college basketball to an extent because I mean some of the teams have changed, but college basketball still plays how basketball used to look. Yeah, it ain't sure. a bunch of just pulling up three pointers and just fast breaks. But to be fair, a lot of that is because the skill set is is it's, so it's, much lower. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's so much lower than it's an the immense difference. You don't have but, that many one on one players that have that ability. I agree. So even, but it's just I just I just like to see it. Opposed I agree. To yeah. Just you know, everybody just coming down shooting fifty five three pointers a game. It's like what the fuck. I mean, put put the best college team against the worst NBA team and see what happens. So that's all I'm saying. UConn versus uh, the Trailblazers or Detroit. Anyone, any one of them. I'm yeah, I mean, any, any one of them. I mean, no who. I mean, listen, listen. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Let, they, they, put up, they put up some points. Let the right style of basketball get matched up with some niggas that can hoop. <laughs> <laughs> and see what happens to them. It don't matter Yo, I mean, what you talking about. Listen, man. Let Jordan Poole see Zach EDS oh, on man. isolation. Son of a pit. Come here. And see what come happens. Here. That's all I'm saying. I agree. Kate right. Cunningham going to come out there and give y'all the yeah. work. Right. Y'all already hooping this year. Shout out to Kate Cunningham. So. Finally got his shit together, bum ass team. I mean, they just a bum ass team. Yeah, the truth is bad. Yeah. Whole coach ain't make a difference, man. Yeah, it's just a bum team. Yeah. Monty Williams just collecting a check right now, honestly. He used to be decent. I don't know what happens to him. Man. That that team, I think it's the city. <laughs> I think nah, it's because Blake Griffin had to the boys to the playoffs. He did. He did. Blake he Griffin did. was hooping. Blake Griffin was filthy for yeah, that season. But they, somebody had they, they got, what veteran they got on this damn team? They got Isaiah Stewart, who out here that's, ready to throw hooks. The crazy thing, that's the problem with the whole league, is the league is There's too no vets. young. It's way too young. The league is too young. So, I mean, but that's that's what happens, though. That's what happens. Unfortunately. You know, these, besides somebody like LeBron, you can't. You start playing a little, you get a little older, you can't be running up and down with these kids, man. Yeah, they change the game too much. That iced out all the, the, the players that make the game a certain way, slow the game down. Yeah. Ruggedness, right, right. discipline, play calling. So, definitely going to get more balanced. I can see it becoming more balanced. Uh, and you don't have to because... Ain't, niggas ain't finna be chasing uh, Wimby around the court all Yo. <laughs> I promise you. You don't have to get a defensive stopper for somebody like that. That's how important I mean, those skill at, sets. Look at your come. rookies right now. right? Look at him and look at Chet where yeah, Zach Eady will not be able to do anything with them two. They're going to pull him out to the three-point line, especially because Wimby's much better with a handle than Chet, but Chet has decent. But he's going to pull him out to the three-point line. Boop, boop. Bye. Yeah. I'm out of here. I got to see, though, because a lot of people say he's not going to be that good in the league. I think he might be one of the pieces that shift the NBA back to a certain style of basketball. Even if he's not necessarily the greatest, he could be a Marcus Hall type guy. But he will have to come in with an initial, like, he has to come in and start and play, like, at least decent immediately. I mean, that's going to be hard to determine what's decent, too, because it's like, it's like, I don't know what people are considering decent because Bobo performs and he don't get no PT. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Scoot Henderson didn't look no worse than Jordan Poole. They kicked his ass out the league. 
send him to the G League, yeah. and they tried to bring him back. Yeah, so yeah, he's played well. The Thompson the Twins, now. they up and down. So what's what's decent? It depends on like what the team they in. I mean, Chet and Wimby. Chet got MVP player, right point guard. Wimby is Wimby. You know I'm saying you can't compare <laughs> Wimby. I think it's different. Yo, you know what's funny? I didn't think he was gonna be that good at first. I was really young shooter. Uh, I wasn't sure until I actually saw him play. I never saw him play against the NBA competition. So. Yeah, that's what I was saying. And I wasn't yeah. sure. I thought somebody was going to be able to, like, you know, kind of move him out the way. He didn't have yeah. enough weight. But, um, yeah. And even then, I don't even know. I mean, because he's on a terrible team. So, it's no telling what that'll look like when the team actually is, like, running solid. through him directly. And now the team is scouting reports. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because this is the first like year. So, you know, you got to see it next year. You're going to be like, all right, my guy. Get that shit out of here. I've seen Michael Carter Williams kill his rookie year. He did. He did. What happened to him? I like Michael Carter Williams. He played with Syracuse. I thought he was solid. Trash. And then he was born rookie of the year and they see shit. Yeah. Trash, Shabazz, Navy, all them bums. Damn. I like Shabazz. Nigga, Okafor, everybody else. <laughs> yeah, the decent. The nigga's just trash, man. Machine to beat. <laughs> yeah, that nigga was horrible. All right, man. All yo. Right, man. That's a wrap for episode 47. Click, like, subscribe, holla at us. We gonna holla at y'all. And I'm coming back with a Beyonce take. Please do. 27 songs, my guy. Till next time, man. Like, follow, subscribe, share, repost, comment, everything. I'm gonna have to listen to two songs a fucking day. That nasty ass shit.